Yes, let's go. It's time for some fluid mechanics. Finally, we are doing fluid mechanics, which was my favorite class in undergrad. I don't know exactly what it is about this class, but I had a pretty fine time taking this class. Maybe it's because that it uses my favorite equation, the Bernoulli equation, or maybe because it pokes at one of the million dollar millennium math questions, the Navier-Stokes equation. No, seriously, if you solve this equation, you get a million bucks, but they say you also lose your mind in the process. One of the reasons I love chemical engineering is because it makes the strange familiar and the familiar strange. In the case for fluid mechanics, it makes me look at what I think is the most mundane thing humanly possible, like a cup of water, and it makes me really look at it from a different perspective. Think about fluids for a sec. When you open your faucet, what color is the water? Clear? Are you sure? What shape is the water? Cylindrical? Are you really sure? If you were to push a glass of water initially, would it incline to the left or to the right? Think about it. You can also use fluids to calculate things in large-scale engineering systems or even in your home. So far on my channel, I've used fluid mechanics to calculate the flow rate of my faucet, the incline of an accelerating cup of water, and when Pokemon Go was a huge craze, the pressure inside a Mega Blastoise. So what is fluid mechanics? Fluids are things that flow. And things that flow are things that take the shape of their container, namely liquids and gases. So fluids flow. Mechanics is physics. So really we're studying the physics of fluids. Fluid physics. Well really fluid mechanics is actually part of a trio, namely transport phenomena. Name a more iconic trio. Transport phenomena is essentially the physics of stuff that moves. It consists of three classes that you'll take in chemical engineering, which is fluid mechanics, heat transfer, and mass transfer. Before we talk about fluids, let me briefly talk about heat transfer, because it's the most intuitive of the three in my opinion. When you walk outside on a hot summer's day, like today, the cold isn't leaving your body. Your body is absorbing the heat. That's heat transfer, right? So we experience this every day. Namely, there's a temperature difference that drives the heat flow until it reaches equilibrium. For mass transfer, if you had dye to a cup of water, Now there's a concentration difference that drives the flow of the molecules until it reaches equilibrium. Now what about for fluid mechanics? It's not as intuitive. It's not fluid transfer. It's actually momentum transfer. I want you to keep this in mind. We're going to go over this. Fluids is part of the transport phenomena series in which we study momentum transfer. All right. In this class, we will begin by going over a review of mass and energy balances. It's a review because I have those videos on my channel, so check those out if you need some review. Next, applying the energy balance from the first law of thermal, we will obtain the Bernoulli equation. Yep, it's my favorite equation. Then we will learn about momentum balance for one-dimensional systems and see what all the fuss is about. Finally, we'll go over the expanded three-dimensional non-steady state of the momentum balance. That's right, the million dollar Navier-Stokes equations. Don't worry about all these terms and equations yet. I promise I'll break them all down so they're intuitive and usable. Actually, I can't break it down because you can't break fluids. <laughs> Now, while you're studying for your classes, I want you to actually learn the fundamentals. So I'll be giving you hecka tips for studying, test taking, but more importantly, truly understanding the purpose and how to use the equation. And we're gonna go over more projects, including an experiment in the lab, and one you can do at a home or a restaurant, and I'll throw in some MATLAB code and Excel tricks, because I know all y'all engineers and scientists need that junk. Oh, and believe me, there will be a ton of practice problems. Some prereqs, prerequisites. It'd be ideal if you have thermo, mass balance, and or some more engineering classes under your belt. If not, it would be definitely useful if you have physics and chemistry, and at least one year of single and multivariable calc and differential equations. If you ain't got any of that, and you're missing some calc, don't you worry, child. It'll take some work, but we'll get you to understand. But I do recommend you freshen up on your calc because we're gonna see some stuff that requires some derivations using some calculus. Finally, apart from all these projects and problems we're gonna do, I'm still thinking about it because it's not the most appropriate, but I really, really want to do the fluid mechanics of P. If we finish all that, which will definitely take me a while, then we'll go from there, see what else we can work on. Hydrostatics, dimensional analysis, Rockets. Man, I really, really want to do rockets, which we can do with fluid mechanics. Now, flow me to the next video. Yeah.